Well, hello. I am Sydney here with Eric, Claire, oh, and Hunter. Hello. Good afternoon to the both, all to the all three of you. So I was going to say to the both of you, and I'm not here. think about you. I'm here. You didn't think about Eric. Oh. We were waving just to keep warm. That's there what, you that's go. What we yeah. Just keep moving. And yes. speaking of, we got to talk about it because it was really very, did. very cold overnight, yes. and it yeah. still was feeling a little chilly waking up this morning. Oh, too. absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. we saw lows get into the middle and upper 20s, even cool. lower 20s in some of our northernmost counties. And I mean, we're still going to be seeing those freezing temperatures as we head into tonight. I'm looking for a warm up and it is coming later on into this weekend. Here's the lows from this morning. 27 in Greensboro, 21 in Reedsville. Record was 23 set back in 1930, so not quite there, but still pretty darn cold this morning. And we're looking at even more cooler temperatures, freezing temperatures, I should say, heading into tonight with a low at around 30. Lots of bright blue skies, rich as they are. Temperatures right now are in the 50s, 51 in Greensboro, 53 in Burlington and in Siler City. So not quite a warm day as we head into the next few hours. We're falling back near around 40 by around 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock, mid 30s, lower 30s by around the overnight hours. Here's a look at the future cast clouds and radar waking up. Going to be a cold start near around 30 toward the afternoon, though. We're warming back up near around 60 degrees with that warm up also implementing itself as we head into the weekend. As I hinted at earlier, forecast low temperatures into tonight. We're back in the middle and upper 20s. Warmer weather, though, is on the way. So 64 tomorrow afternoon with high pressure moving offshore. So we're going to start to see a little bit more of a southwestern flow. What that means for us here in the triad, some warmer air is going to move itself into the area. So we're going to be seeing those highs make their way deeper into the 60s and kind of a comparison of what you can expect. Normal middle 60s going to get even better than better than that as we head into Saturday and into early next week. More comfortable air switching into the area back in the upper 60s and lower 70s into early next week. Claire, thank you. New at four, some somber news to report. Legendary UNC basketball player Walter Davis has died. WFMY News 2's Amanda Ferguson joins us now with more from the school on his passing. Amanda. Walter Davis was one of the best shooters in the history of North Carolina basketball. He averaged about 16 points in 119 games in his four seasons with the Tar Heels. He led the Heels to an ACC tournament title and an appearance in the NCAA championship game in the late 70s. He was also a part of the United States Olympic team that won the gold medal in 1976. He played in the NBA too. He was drafted by the Phoenix Suns where he won the NBA Rookie of the Year. Davis was a five-time NBA All-Star. Now on top of all of his success, he was North Carolina's head coach, Hubert Davis's uncle. He was 69 years old. It's been a year since the Greensboro Fire Department lost one of their own. Robert Swink was a 26 year veteran for the department. He worked as an engineer for the last 10 years of his career. Last year, October 31st, he lost his battle with cancer. He was declared an official line of duty death by the International Association for Firefighters in August. The fire department wants his legacy to be remembered as they continue to find ways to protect firefighters from cancer. Robert Swink was devoted to his family. He loved fishing. Um, he loved a good glass of bourbon. He was serious the way he approached the job, but he always had a kind word, always was quick-witted, um, just a, a, a fun guy to be around. Dave Coker worked at the department with Robert Swink. He says Swink was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He even came out of remission, but shortly after, he relapsed. So when the cancer came back, it it moved quickly, it metastasized very quickly, and he declined pretty pretty quickly when he went back into the hospital. It was crushing, um, you know, when he passed. Swink's cancer was considered occupational cancer. This means the cancer was caused by repeated exposure to cancer-causing chemicals while on the job. Coker says Swink is not the only firefighter who battled this. It's not a building collapse, it's not being caught in a fire, it's not cardiac events like it used to be. The number one killer of firefighters are, is occupational cancer. The Greensboro Fire Department has made progress over the years to limit firefighters' exposure to these chemicals. Each firefighter has two sets of turnout gear. When one set gets dirty, there's a clean set for the next emergency. The department also has showers on scene for firefighters to hose off immediately after a fire. These limit exposure, but Coker says there's still work to be done. When we have personnel pass away, they 
you know, they, they live on through the stories we tell around the kitchen table. Um, there's pictures of Swink at Station One where he was assigned. Um, and we keep them alive, their memory alive, through sharing those stories and the good times together. Um, you know, our hope moving forward is that we can reduce occupational cancers in the fire service so that, that families don't have to go through this loss, fire departments don't have to go through this loss. The department is looking to implement more advanced screenings for cancer. They also hope more research is done about their turnout gear because there are cancer causing chemicals in the material. Let's get to your four to five roundup here. Now we are learning new information about the departure of Silver Airways from PTI Airport in Greensboro. In a statement, the airline apologized for disruptions following their decision to end its service from PTI and Nashville International Airport. Now Silver Airways says it's providing refunds for customers who were booked on any flight to or from Greensboro and Nashville after November 1st. They say flyers can request refunds by getting in touch with the airline's call center. Center. You can find the number on our website. In Davidson County, it's day four of the sentencing hearings for Molly Corbett and her father, Tom Martins. Earlier this week, the father-daughter duo accepted plea deals in the 2015 murder of Molly's husband, Jason Corbett. While Martin and his daughter claim it was self-defense, prosecutors believe it was the opposite. Both sides are making arguments in front of a judge who's expected to make sentencing decisions soon both face more than a decade in prison. Thomasville City Schools is preparing a search for a new superintendent. Today, the district announced superintendent Dr. Chris Kennedy would be retiring at the end of the year. They say both sides agreed to part ways after three and a half years leading the district. The school board has named Chief Academic Officer Andrew Weiner as interim superintendent pending Dr. Kennedy's retirement. He's expected to step down on December 31st. Another Read to Succeed event in the books. This morning, the Good Morning Show stopped at Brunson Elementary in Winston-Salem. We talked about why every profession requires good reading skills. A group of stellar fourth grade readers even got the chance to put on their own Brunson Elementary newscast. You can catch those highlights tomorrow on the Good Morning Show at 6 and 9. Well, this is an annual tradition that I am very proud to be a part of. The big switch over to all holiday music on Mix 99.5. I went to hang out with Scotty and Hannah today to make that changeover. So this year we went a little high tech. I told them I had my magic Alexa with them. And I said to Alexa, Alexa, switch to all holiday music on Mix 99.5. And it all changed immediately. This tradition, by the way, is almost 30 years in the making. What does it make you feel like, though? Because to do this, I mean, the triad waits for this every year. It's so cool just to see the, like, hype leading up to it on social media. People texting us, emailing us, saying, when are you going to switch to Christmas? And it's finally here. You know, there's people who love Christmas so much. I saw a house decorated all the way yesterday on the way home. And so, so there's early adapters. So that We're here for those people. But then there's other people that say, eh, we're going to wait till Thanksgiving. We'll be here. Yeah, they'll be here. They keep it going until usually a day or two after Christmas and, and that's it. But I think this may be the earliest that I think they've ever made the switch over. Wow. Because people argue all the time, is it too early, is it not? Mm -hmm. but, th but now when you go there, it's just constant See, Christmas music. If Mariah Carey says it's time. That's right. I think it's time. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> when a woman <laughs> breaks out of a block of ice we, and yes. says it's time to start celebrating yeah. Christmas, you have to it's do it. It's the second I listen to, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. Yeah, I, I like, you know, I understand why people like to hear the Christmas music kind of like right after coming off of Halloween and things of that yep. nature going into November, December, but it's something about hearing it too, just kind of when Christmas is like almost here, maybe December 1st, December 2nd, 3rd, 4th, I'm something Thanksgiving, like that. I'm Thanksgiving week. I, okay. I'm good with that. So what I do is, this is all just my psychological thing, I don't listen to it on purpose until then. <laughs> because yeah. I want it to remain special. I don't want to be tired yeah, of it. Yeah, that's what I that's, And see, that's why I like to kind of wait in that back end a little bit too. Makes me feel thankful about that yep. time. That's a good start. But a lot of yeah. people like it super early, so Mix 99.5 no. is on it. You My know? mom's yeah. in July listening yes. to it. Yes, yeah. I know people that do that. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Christmas yeah. in July, that's yeah. a thing. All right, I decided to take my social media question to a little different angle today. I asked you what holiday song makes you turn the volume Ooh. down. 
down here. Lisa says, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. I, I might be on that, on that train too. Uh, Amy Salambini says, John Lennon, happy Christmas, and Dominic the donkey. I agree with her about the donkey song. Um, I like the John Lennon one though. Brenda, Brenda says, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Um, Nancy says, just Mariah Carey sing. No. I was kind of floored at that. And then Laura um, said, Christmas shoes. That one, see now that one's too sad. Whoa, no, wait. I okay, Christmas I guess shoes. I can see that, but that is me. my number one favorite. Favorite. Like that, that is, is the top. one that like gets me in the feels. I'm like I'm so thankful, you know. But I don't. It's not that I dislike it. I can't. It can't I can't handle it. It's too it's much. Sad. It's so Have sad. Have you seen the music video too? No. There's a music oh. video. There's there's like, music. I no. believe there's a video about it. I think they did like a movie, like a Hallmark special or something with the. I think build. that's where it's from. Oh, out of it? that, like, built it out of that. that I don't believe. Yeah, I, I can't handle. It's too much. It is too much. Yeah, it makes me sad. It makes me really sad, yeah. yes. I have, I have a few Christmas songs, but I can't even think of the ones that I like right now. That you now. love? I like I'm so I'm just not many. in my mindset. It's not in the, the Christmas like mindset right now, but yeah. I love just playing Christmas music on just repeat, repeat, mm. repeat, especially just my favorite ones. I like the Hallmark movies. Oh, oh the Hallmark movies are really good. That's my guilty pleasure. That'll get you into the holidays. They're so cheesy. Sure. Mm -hmm. it's they are. <laughs> it's actually, I've told in my opinion, this is just me. Don't anybody get all upset. I say, they're so bad, they're great. Yeah. Yes, you know, because yes. 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 you can predict what's going to happen, so you're like, easy. You know, yeah. you're like, oh no, the city girls no movie. It's one of like the right. countries. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I lost I like my job. <laughs> Like lifetime yeah, same movies thing. are very, you know, you know it's yeah. going to happen, but for yeah. some reason you're just trying to see it all the way through. Yeah. I lost my job in the big city. I had to go back to my hometown to run my parents' business and my high school boyfriend happens to be. Oh. Happens to be like that, that's just what so it is. happen to be single, you know? So and a single. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, great. I am talking about uh, caregivers of those who have Alzheimer's. Well, November is National Alzheimer's Disease Month and National Caretakers Month. And as much as we talk about early signs of the disease, prevention and treatment, the impact of caregivers to those who are struggling with Alzheimer's is just as important. Blanca Cobb is here to talk more about this. Blanca, why is it important to talk about the caregivers? Because it's tireless, exhausting work. It's very hard and heartbreaking to see people who they love 
their cognitive abilities decline, that they have memory issues, that their body forgets how to function, and then they experience this range of emotions from sadness to denial to anger. And it's being able to process it while still being able to be this wonderful, fantastic, all giving caregiver to those who they love. Normally the caregivers are a spouse initially or adult children who end up taking care of the person who has Alzheimer's. And it, it really just pulls at the heartstrings. Sure, yeah. And what should the caretakers um, keep in mind? Caretakers should keep in mind that they're doing the best that they can, and sometimes it feels like it isn't enough, or they could be doing something differently. But the reality is that as Alzheimer's progresses, the cognitive abilities deteriorate and being able to be independent isn't quite there. So how their loved one communicates and interacts with them changes, even though they're given their best and they're having patience and they're doing all that they can do, make sure that there's a daily routine and they're given their medicines. It still changes the way their loved one interacts with them. And it can be very, um, disheartening but realize this your loved one who has alzheimer's or losing their independence a lot of times they don't remember or understand why they can't drive or cook for themselves or why they can't live alone a lot of times they still realize that they're dependent on somebody else and when those moments of fluency uh, they figure out that i don't want to be a burden and it's just it's it just weighs on um, on both people but here's the deal though when communication gets difficult, this is a time to really rely on nonverbal communication, smiles and gestures, touch if they're comfortable with the touch on the hand or their arm, sometimes, sometimes proximity, just getting close to somebody so they don't feel alone. Again, you have to read their signs and make sure that they're open to it. But sometimes you don't need words, it's just the companionship that helps find that loneliness. Absolutely, and what's the best way we can support caretakers? One way is to try to put yourself in their position and what they're going through and realize that they're not only helping their loved one, but they're also balancing their own life, their own responsibilities. A lot of time they still have their own family and work responsibilities and then financial obligations and they still need rest and they still need sleep. And being able to be there to not only active listen and be an emotional support, but also give them breaks. So that way they can re-energize and that is so important. Rest is important for the caregiver. So any way that you can help share the load with them would be very appreciative. And even saying that, there's some caregivers feel like, no, this is my responsibility. This is what I want to do. And they do want to do it, but they also need help in taking care of themselves. So that way they can be on their full energy when they're taking care of their loved one who is struggling with Alzheimer's. Blanca, thank you so much. And remember, you can continue the conversation with Blanca on her Facebook page, Blanca Cobb, body language expert. We'll be right back.
Certainly was a cold one this morning. Greensboro hit 27 degrees, just a couple of degrees away from the record of 23 set back in 1930. Temperatures now still pretty cool, feeling like winter. We're still in the 50s here at 420, 51 in Greensboro and 52 in Winston-Salem. Now the next few hours are going to begin to fall back into the 40s, 30s, eventually even back into the upper 20s. Not quite 27, but 29 some models are suggesting our forecast currently at 30. So cold start for the day tomorrow. Going to want to bundle up, maybe give the car an extra couple minutes to warm up. Toward the afternoon though, warmer than what we're going to be seeing today. What we, what we are seeing, excuse me, in the lower to mid 50s, more like upper 50s. It's near around 60 degrees and that's thanks to high pressure moving offshore, allowing winds to shift heading into this weekend. Warmer air breaking into the forecast, so starting to see upper 60s by the time we head into Saturday and also into your Sunday and we're still going to begin to warm up into this weekend and into early next week as temperatures make their way back into the middle 70s. Warmer conditions and staying dr dry throughout the seven day. When you think of flower girls and weddings, you probably think of little girls walking down the aisle. But as Boyd Hooper found out, that wasn't the case in Crystal, Minnesota, where one bride's flower girl was a bit more mature. That sturdy old cart could serve as a metaphor for Ruthie Claddy. Yeah, as long as the wheels keep turning. As long <laughs> as Ruthie's wheels keep turning, she'll be going straight to her flowers. Yeah, that's a white zinnia. Zinnias and flocks and roses. And this thing is getting taller than me. Ruthie's Look at among them every day. These are begonias. Watering and weeding and transplanting. I'm getting dirty little by little. Flowers now joined in her garden by balloons that recently marked a milestone. Cheers to Ruthie Cloudy for being 100 and fabulous. Yeah. People don't believe that I'm a hundred. Nor do they believe 
this. I got two new knees, total knee replacement. I was 95 when I got this one, 97 when I got this one. Her doctor might not have believed it. Said we don't do it on 90 year old. If Ruthie hadn't become <laughs> his exception. From all over the hospital, it was, seemed to be such a, a novelty because they were all coming to look at me. <laughs> on her new knees, I'm going to get this flox out. Ruthie went back to her flowers. Have you ever read all these articles about what flowering does for you? What do flowers do for you? Make me feel good. <laughs> the same way she feels <laughs> when she sees that photo of her flower-flanked granddaughter. Oh, she's a wonderful girl. Oh, I just love her. She's just the rock in our whole family. Yeah. She's just Jillian Claddy. She's awesome. She's a rock star. Has spent her entire life watching her grandmother blossom. Yeah, I love her. <laughs> Which brings us to Jillian's wedding day. This is it, my dear. <laughs> Before selecting her flowers. You're not nervous, are you? <laughs> Jillian thought. Okay, here we go. Who better to be her flower girl? She's been a role model to me my whole life. She's never stopped being a role model. And so I just said, you know, I want my grandma to do it. Ruthie's applause ushered in the bride. Ruthie wore roses and a smile. I vow to put your needs first. Jillian and Eli chose a hundred-year-old gardener to pave with petals their path. For they know where Ruthie goes. Hi! Love. Give your grandma a little hug. Grows. Boy Hooper, <laughs> Minneapolis. Oh, that is just so precious. Shot. I know. Oh my goodness. All of us are so tearing sweet. up every day. I know, I am tearing up actually. That was cute. It's beautiful to see the type of dynamic and relationship that the, the bride and then the grandmother both have. You can tell that she means so much to her. Oh so gosh. it's just beautiful. I know. My great grandma was 104 when really? she passed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And my grandma now is in her in her 90s. She still walks every day. Good genetics. It's wow. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. yeah. But my aunt, I just last last week I went to um, her 100th birthday party. She's wow. the last surviving aunt or uncle. Even my parents have passed. And it's mm -hmm. so I went back to see her. I honestly probably hadn't seen her in 20 years. And mm -hmm. right away she goes, Hey Eric, come over here and sit down. Sharp as a tack, 100 years old. Mm -hmm. like, That's I awesome. I hope we can wow. all do that. I'm, I'm still blown away that they said, or she was telling him, Two knee replacements, one at 95, and I think Gosh. the other was 97. I'm like, they, wow. they normally, what, say, nah, no, you know, yeah. maybe let's yeah, not, maybe do, not it, but do it. But she's just running around. She mm -hmm. is running around. Strong woman. Yeah, mm -hmm. incredible. Very good. Awesome. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back.
Welcome back to the Fortified. I'm Eric. This is Sydney, <laughs> Claire, and Hunter. Hey. We're all here today. Yes, yeah, so and one step closer to the weekend as well, too. Mm -hmm. Fun weekend plans. Like what am I doing? I'm, go I'm going to see Shelby <laughs> J tomorrow night. At the I just kind of put yeah, you guys on guard. Yeah. So, yeah. All of us are like <laughs> trying to think, okay, wait a second. Yeah, Carolina Theater tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Shelby J, who's from Greensboro and sang with Prince yeah. in the mm -hmm. New Power Generation. You got to go. That's it, awesome. If there are a lot of people, clear that are going to be out and about this weekend, mm -hmm. I know they're hoping for some some good weather, especially yeah. from all the, the cold weather we've been experiencing here uh, recently. Well, good news. Okay. So I've definitely got some good news. <laughs> I mean, after those freezing temperatures last night and more coming tonight, milder temperatures temperatures are actually coming for your upcoming weekend. We're back in the upper 60s, but today is still pretty cool this afternoon, still in the lower 50s amid lots and lots of blue skies thanks to high pressure. Next 12 hours, we're falling back down to the 30s. Going to be another sub-freezing night ahead with lows in the upper 20s and lower 30s. A cold start to the day heading into tomorrow. Clear night, clear night skies. We're starting to see more sunshine in the afternoon, warming us back up near around 60 degrees. Look at the future cast, though. Lots and lots of sunshine continuing throughout the day on Friday. You'll notice, though, heading into the weekend, we're also warming back up to the more comfortable upper 60s, even around 70 as we head into next week. Something also to note is the drought report just from about a week ago has worsened, starting to see that more severe and moderately dry areas expand across North Carolina in terms of relief. Not looking likely that we are going to begin to see it, especially this weekend and into early next week as high pressure dominates the area. Some offshore moisture, but doesn't look like that's going to sweep anywhere near our area. Heading in the seven day forecast now into tonight, clear and cold again, freezing temperatures, upper 20s tomorrow. We're back near around 60 warming up in your seven day forecast. Remember to set those clocks back one hour for the ending of daylight saving time. We're back in the lower 70s heading into Sunday and into early next week. Middle 70s even working their way back into your seven day forecast by the time we head into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Claire, thank you. Nearly four weeks into the war, Israeli troops are now at the edges of Gaza City, but pressure is increasing for a pause in the fight to aid civilians. Skylar Henry reports from the White House. Israeli ground troops are closing in on Hamas strongholds, fighting militants on the edges of Gaza City. Israel is warning civilians to head south. Those who don't are paying a heavy price. Thousands have died amidst massive destruction. Israel's military says Hamas is holding more hostages than they'd originally calculated, now raising the number to 242, including dozens of children. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will be back in Israel on Friday, working on their release. We will focus as well on steps that need to be taken uh, to protect civilians who are in a crossfire of, of Hamas's making. Uh, and we want to look at concrete steps that can be taken to better protect them. President Biden has shown staunch support for Israel, but he's also calling for a humanitarian pause to get hostages out and aid to civilians. The conflict has created a divide in Congress. The new House Speaker is promising quick action on an Israel aid package. We're going to do it in short order, and it provides Israel the aid it needs to defend itself, free its hostages, and eradicate Hamas. Over in the Senate, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is calling the House bill woefully inadequate. Dozens of Americans trapped in Gaza since the war began are finally making their way home. Palestinians with dual citizenship have been allowed to exit through Rafah Gate into Egypt, while trucks enter carrying urgently needed humanitarian aid. And while Secretary Blinken is in Israel, he is expected to ask the government for brief pauses in its military operations. Let's get to your four to five roundup. It was the second day of testimony from former President Donald Trump's sons in their father's civil fraud trial in New York. Eric Trump took the stand after his older brother Donald Trump Jr. finished his testimony today. Trump Jr. says he has never worked on his father's financial statements, adding that the lawsuit is purely political. The Trumps have denied any wrongdoing in the lawsuit. On Monday, former President Donald Trump is set to take the stand to defend himself.
It's open enrollment time for the Affordable Care Act. That means it's time to compare benefits, prices, and consider changing to a new plan or to enroll for the first time. Now, while some health plans are lowering premiums, many are increasing them. Experts say that's a big reason to check out ACA on healthcare.gov. In most states, open enrollment lasts through January 15th. Coming up at 5.30, we're answering all of your health care questions about open enrollment for 30 minutes. You can start texting your questions now to 336-379-5775. Toyota is recalling nearly 2 million RAV4 SUVs to fix potential fire risk. The recall covers 1.9 million RAV4s from 2013 through 2018 model years. According to the recall notice, some replacement 12-volt batteries used in the SUVs have smaller dimensions and could move, causing a short circuit. The company says it's still working on a fix and will notify affected owners by late December. Toyota declined to say if the problem has caused any fires, crashes, or injuries. Happening right now is the greatest homecoming on earth over at North Carolina A&T. Hundreds of students and alumni are making their way to Greensboro to celebrate the university and of course reunite with old friends at Aggie Fan Fest. Right now, HBO's Uninterrupted is taping an episode of the shop inside the Harrison Auditorium and food trucks are lining up on campus. Coming up at five, we hear from some of the vendors benefiting from homecoming week. And we made a guide for all the Aggies with everything you need to know from homecoming. Just text GHO to 336-379-5775 and we'll be sure to send you a link to our web story. New at 430, a major update about one of North Carolina's most prestigious amusement parks. Cedar Fair, that's the company that owns Carowinds, it is merging with Six Flags. The combined company will be comprised of 42 amusement parks and nine resort properties all across the country, Mexico and Canada. The merger will also bring Six Flags headquarters to Charlotte. The deal is expected to close in the first half of next year once Six Flags shareholders approve this. The company's attempted a merger in 2019 but that fell apart due to the pandemic. I mean, this is huge because Six Flags is big. Six Flags is Very really big. big. I'm from Georgia and so I just remember every we, a lot of weekends and my friends <laughs> and I, we would always go to Six Flags. But I have not had a chance to go to Carowinds just yet because I do love uh, riding roller coasters. But yes, um, you know, any amusement yeah. park with a lot of rides a lot of fun. My favorite part as a kid going to Carowinds is that the North Carolina, South Carolina line divides the park and we would all stand there and they had signs and put one foot in North Carolina Ooh. and one in South Carolina and get your picture taken. <laughs> it's like right there that. on that line. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, the Six Flags too, a lot of people search Six Flags and then choose their destination to hit some of those parks. So that could be good in It'll that sense too. Yeah. I got stuck on a Six Flags. <gasps> Did you? The ride person? one time, yeah. I think it was Batman is what it was called and we were stuck at the very top and me, oh. my brother was screaming louder think, than I no, was. No, that's Superman. I was gonna say which one's the oh, ride where you're like that no. would like that would be a scary no. ride to be. Stuck but our feet on were like dangling, that. so to me that was still scary because it was mm. like. But yeah. That's they, my they worst fear. Yeah, no, I'm you. glad you ended up being okay. Yeah, <laughs> you made it right. okay, guys. <laughs> well, are you ready for a comeback? The new adventures of Ed and Dex starts now. Because welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Mm -hmm. Keenan and Kel are back as Ed and Dex in Good Burger 2. The sequel follows the two friends as they reunite in the present day at the fast food restaurant Good Burger. With a new crew, Dex makes a plan that puts the fate of Good Burger at risk once again. <laughs> Good Burger has two premieres November 22nd exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. So this got me wondering, what movie do you think did or did not deserve a sequel? <laughs> I got a lot of <laughs> good answers and things of that nature. Joseph says pretty much any horror movie did not deserve a sequel. <laughs> Freddie, Jason, and do you know how many times they <laughs> killed Michael Myers? I know Michael Myers is just, just out there, it. just roaming the streets. Dallas said, <laughs> Fast and Furious should have been done after the second one. James said the Avatar didn't need to be followed up. The sequel was three hours. That could have just been a 15 minute Ooh. film. Nobody asked for it. And on the other side, John says the candidate with Robert Redford deserved a sequel. He says a sequel maybe 15 or 20 years later could show him running for president or how his time in politics changed him. So, I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of responses. I will say, I said taken. 
you know, with Liam oh, Neeson. Oh, yo, is it like taking, oh, there's a bunch of them. I think there's about three or four yeah. or something like that. I just, the first one was so good. Was and then so after good. the second, third, which um, the second and third one, they were good as well too. But I was just like, you know. Leave a good thing just, alone. Yeah, yeah, keep it at first. The I first say, one. I heard a lot of people say, oh, Field of Dreams. I'm like, no, that's an incredible movie. <laughs> you have to leave it alone and don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. There were some, I wonder if there's any that we think, this would be a question of our producer, Aaron, that we need to do sometime is what, what sequel was better than the original? Because that's oh. a good question, because that rarely happens. Mm. But like, some people do feel like. I had to think about that one, but there but are some out there. I'm trying to remember, like Top Gun Maverick, right, was so uh, big. So good, though. And so, like, debatably, that could be a good one. Yeah. My other thing to add to it, too, is, like, uh, like episodes and series. Because, like, Full House loved it, but then they brought it back, and I was a big of a fan, you know? Oh, yeah, wasn't so it's it like, Fuller or House? Fuller or House, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. their yeah. other Fuller version. House. They should have just been kept there. Kind of like that's so much better. A bit too. Yeah. They had the yeah. other the spinoff of that's 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 I do like Pitch Perfect, all of yeah, them. Yeah, those are good. Love me some those are good. <laughs> so, yes. Well, we also love giveaways. Yes, we you do. You guys love, love, big, well, we <laughs> could not even say that. <laughs> you love giveaways. Well, a couple of reminders before we go to break. Since we are the official home of the Carolina Panthers, our ticket giveaway is back. All you have to do is answer a couple of Panthers trivia questions on our website. Over the next month, four lucky winners will get two tickets to a Panthers home game plus a swag pack. There will be four opportunities to win. Trivia for the week one giveaway closes tomorrow at 3 p.m. And this weekend, you can catch the Panthers game right here on WFMY News 2. Carolina will be taking on the Indianapolis Colts inside Bank of America Stadium. The last time these two teams faced off, the Colts came out on top 38 to 6. The Panthers are hoping history doesn't repeat itself as they go for their second win of the season. The game is this Sunday at 4.05. We'll be back. Well, sure. Okay, I'll do a mic check. Ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together like a classic combination. It is reality check time, okay? Are you ready for it? We are going to have a reality check experience. Here it is, 
Eight Fridays, including this one, as in tomorrow. That means you have 53 days until Christmas. Wow. The year what? has just sped up, my friends. Tamia, my goodness. why are you doing this to we us? Just... You need a reality <laughs> check every once in a while no, just to know true. where you are. It's it is for very planning true. purposes. Yes. We need this. It's hey. not to make you crazy or to make you anxious. In fact, it's to do the opposite. Right? Get, get it all get in it order. Done, right. Get yeah. your, uh, your gifts in order, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Count your paychecks till then. That, that that's too. what really. You're on it. Yes. If you're feeling the pressure for Christmas shopping and such, there is some good news. <laughs> Retailers have begun starting their holiday sales a lot earlier in recent years. And this year, we're expecting the prices you see right now to remain consistent all the way through Black Friday. This means you can start shopping and saving now without worrying about missing out on those blockbuster deals later on. Here's a few things that may be on the wish list. Sony wireless earbuds. They're listed at $298 at ABT Electronics, Amazon, and Crutchfield. But look for this price to drop in the next week or so. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S8. Great for gaming. $547 at Walmart. Normally, it's $699. And the air fryer. Still the small appliance of the year. The Dash Tasty Crisp air fryer is now $59 at Amazon. Shopping early, it's great. Except for one item. And that item is... A new TV. We've seen year after year that TVs are always at their best possible price during the Black Friday and Cyber Monday weekend. So if you're thinking about buying a new set, wait until then. <laughs> All right, so of that list, was there anything that was going to be on your list? Maybe, okay. Air fryer. Mm -hmm. Gosh, can you believe I do not have an air fryer? I know. Not I afraid love my to air admit fryer. that. Everybody love it. does. I love it. We have a friend that gave us her old one because she got a new one. She goes, you got to try this, and we still haven't done it. And you have been the biggest I love the air fryer. I do too. Yes. Everything. I, 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 I can never cook heard now because of the air fryer. You can cook now. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, so <laughs> this is something, um, like when she said, you know, go ahead and just buy stuff, and you think to yourself, but what if it goes on better sale later? Mm -hmm. So this is what I say. You go ahead, you buy it. Make sure you read the return policy. If you can return it in that 30 days, like we're bla past Black Friday, then buy it now. And if it doesn't go on better sale, then you just keep no, it. Perfect. That's smart. Honestly. That works. Good we advice. need a new TV for the bedroom, so I'll have to wait. Wait mm -hmm. until Black Friday. And okay. here's my other PSA. Get gift receipts for everything. Tape it to the item. Give folks, you know, I always hate it when I give it to someone and then I'm like, oh, how did you like that? Oh, well, I don't really use that kind or that color or whatever. And I'm like, then go, cha then yeah, go change, change it. Yeah. 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 Some people don't want to because they, I've heard people feel bad about that. Oh, no. To be Look, happy with what you get. You I get bought me. you something because I wanted you to have something. Yes. And mm. so I want you to have something, like right? That, that you're going to use. Then you don't have to talk about it yeah. either. Yeah, so right. You don't have true. to talk about it later. That's yeah. right. Remember, hey, it's 53 days away. Oh my Yay! Uh, I gotta go shopping. <laughs> <laughs>
It's time to connect the dots. We are talking personal hygiene. It's defined as taking care of your body and more. It's also more important than you think, especially as more people head back to the office. Ben Thompson takes a look at the how the fear of body odor has led to a surge of sales. Back to the office means back to wearing deodorant. Let's connect the dots. The need for deodorant has surged as people gear up to sit next to their coworkers once again. Popular brands like Dove and Impulse reported a 15% increase in sales. But the sweet smell of success couldn't happen without drastic lows. The companies say they saw a dip in sales during the pandemic. With 70% of workers working from home during the pandemic, the majority not feeling the need for deodorant. Now almost 30% remain hybrid as companies promote in-office work. And the push to work in person has made deodorant one of the fastest growing self-care products on the market. And that is Connecting the Dots. A chilly day today, only making it into the 40s and lower 50s. In the next couple of hours, we're going to be falling back down to the 30s, back in the upper 20s into tomorrow morning. So sub-freezing once again tomorrow, though. Cold start. We're going to be warmer back near around 60 degrees. Seven-day forecast does include milder temperatures for those of you that do like the warmer outside feel. Upper 60s lower 70s, even middle 70s by the time we head into next week. Lots and lots of sunshine is on the way. Also, don't forget to set back your alarms, excuse me, those clocks by one hour for the end of daylight saving time heading into Saturday night and into early Sunday morning. Lots of sunshine, dry conditions heading into next week. All right, so tonight is the night that women are supposed to be able to sit back and relax when dinner time rolls around. And that it well, in there, Sydney. Sydney. I was so excited <laughs> about this time. segment. Your so excited. I was running around, dancing, and just excited. And I didn't want to interrupt Ooh, Aaron. Today, you laughing. <laughs> today is National Men Make Dinner Day. We I thought, we talked about it. I thought it was yesterday. I did too. So I made homeheim spaghetti last I night. I smelled it so, all the way across. <laughs> the so studio. obviously, I don't expect you guys to eat spaghetti on TV because that would be a nightmare. <laughs> um, but it is we warmed up for you. For so sure. here. Oh, that's so nice. Slide it down, get her, because I've thanks. already had some. So okay. I made this and brought oh, it in for I'm you ready. guys today. You know, food just makes you so happy. Does it? It just puts an immediate smile anywhere. on your face. So thank you so you much, my friend. Thank you. Oh, yeah, my I, um, gosh. And I did this, um, get, okay. I did it last night, but there's so much, <laughs> and my family has gone on a little mini vacation, and I had to work, so I'm at home alone, and I'm like, this will all go <laughs> Because right. you, know, you know when you make spaghetti, it's always a Great lot. Leftover. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, it definitely she is. Did it. She did it. You ate it on TV. I got a little bit of sauce, though, on my You're so smart. Here. Smart. <laughs> you, you are. You're like, like a smart I queen. know how I eat. Every time they said that people look at you, I would become smooth. a meme. You guys, like yeah. I would like all over my face. I love yeah. spaghetti. So, oh, so I love good. spaghetti. We appreciate it. There you it. go. Thank yes, you. men make dinner. It happens. We're gonna take a break. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad my wife didn't see this. We'll be right back. <laughs> You got it. Mic check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Check, check. So. <laughs> mic check. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Hey, just, um, Hi there, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana. We for me. Have fun with that spaghetti. Hi, Brett. I'm so sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Can you hear me? I don't know why this.
Hi, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. We reported on something this week that got me shaking my head. The National Park Service had to close eight miles of the Blue Ridge Parkway because visitors have been feeding and trying to hold a young bear. Are you kidding me? They even shared a picture of an instance where you can see several people approaching a bear to take a picture of it. Maybe because I grew up in a rural wooded area, I was taught at an early age to avoid bears because newsflash, they're dangerous. The Park Service wrote, when people intentionally attract bears with trash and food, it can lead to very dangerous situations. Now, because of the ridiculous actions of a few, everyone who drives the Blue Ridge has to suffer. It's not just bears. Look at what's happening at the Outer Banks with the wild horses. The Corolla Wild Horse Fund has repeatedly warned people from approaching or feeding the horses. It got so bad a few years ago, they put up billboards warning against feeding them, saying it could actually kill the horses. Now, if you want to feed a wild animal, go find a squirrel or a bird. That's just my two cents. And you're four to five. WFMY News 2 at 5 starts right now. Excitement is building ahead of North Carolina a and homecoming weekend. As current Aggies celebrate, some alums are cashing in on the festivities. WFMY News 2's Daniel Cruz talked to business owners excited for GHO to bring a boost while also spreading Aggie pride. Chad and Julie, welcome to what will be FanFest 2023.